Sony Mazda MX-5, uh, the, one of the most enduring automotive icons of the 20th century, inspired by the MGBs of the 1960s and uh, Lotus um, 7 uh, by Colin Chapman. The idea was to have a small package uh, with a small engine and lightweight, which inspired excellent handling and excellent performance with not, not a lot of power. So this is my particular version, my, my own model, which I've owned since 2014. Bought uh, from new by uh, a gentleman who unfortunately passed away prematurely, who then um, basically put in trust uh, by his mechanic, whom I then bought it off from in 2014. I've had this car for obviously seven years, it's been a lot of fun. And um, it was originally sold to me in red. I've since painted it lo uh, a Lexus grey actually, so that it can be, it looks a bit more masculine. And also because um, I obviously, for reasons of space, I put the hard top on and uh, obviously it has a soft top underneath. It's got a mohair hood, which I bought from Singapore a few years ago with a glass hood. And uh, this is my version, very tidy. Uh, obviously, um, this is the interior and it's got the original cloth seats inside. Um, if you know, just the history of the car. The original NA seats had two speakers in the back so that you can blast your music in and you can basically drive through the streets of California uh, with your music blasting through it. And um, yeah, so I've basically seen and kept this car in very good nick. Uh, obviously every 3,000 kilometers, give it a good service, semi-synthetic oil. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, uh, take too long in between services. This is the passenger side interior, again very, very tidy. Um, original interior, I'd like to keep things standard. Um, obviously in those days, the MX-5s came pretty spartan, not a lot of uh, wood and leather inside as you can see. That's my uh, mohair hood. <coughs> as you can see, it's stored away, can't be uh, erected because of the fixed uh, targa top I've got on it now. And uh, that's the basically the interior that you see here, that uh, little bin there is for smart tags, touch and goes. Pair of glasses, maybe put a spare keys in that little cubby hole. Glove box, obviously very Spartan. Um, not the most uh, robust glove box in the world, but um, this is what they would build like in the early 90s. It came with um, small 14-inch alloys. As you can see, I've switched them out for 15-inch alloys. Runs now on 195, 50 profile, 15-inch rims. Um, it used to run on spindly little skinny tires, I think 165s or 175s sliding all over the place which was a lot of fun except that if it started raining really heavily it got a bit hairy driver side um, interior Momo steering wheel uh, came as standard in those days um, great fun to use not too thick not too thin and uh, leather wrapped of course Napa leather uh, original pedals original cloth seats original interior I like to keep things standard as I say and um, yeah, it's been pretty well kept through the years for me, always under a cover, never really exposed to the elements. And uh, this fixed head targa, which I can remove anytime, it's on now. And uh, yep, let's have a look at the, the engine bay. Okay, this is the real heartbeat of the car, the 1.6 litre uh, inline 4 uh, engine. Produces about 115 horsepower or 135 newton meters of torque. Not a huge output, of course, but driving a very th light car, just uh, under a thousand kilograms. So you can imagine a lot of smiles per mile. Condition of this engine is, of course, as you can see, decent, not pristine. Um, it is, um, I would say, it's a B condition. Done a few bits and pieces through it through the years. Uh, obviously, a bottom end overhaul. You can see the flecks of red paint down there, uh, revealing the original color of the car. We see this is a twin cam engine, produces at that point in time 115 horsepower. Um, purely a CBU, all master cars are made in, made in Hiroshima, Japan. Acceleration 0, uh, to, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, 8.7 seconds. I'm not sure what it does today in this day and age. Um, maximum speed 185 kilometers an hour. Not to say this car is built for top end speed, it's really built for uh, point to point uh, performance and handling. Really a lot of fun through the hills and mountains through the curvy bits. Yeah, this is a 1991 engine of course, so the mileage does reflect the vintage. But I've kept in decent condition. Every 3,000 kilometers or so, I've uh, done, a, done a full service. Uh, fully semi-synthetic, uh, only semi-synthetic of course. Uh, 
not a lot of miles put in it, not very demanding of the engine, but overall I would say it's quite decent condition. And yeah, I think this is a, is a solid B for what it is. I would say this pure two-seater, not built for touring, clearly. This is a tiny little uh, boot. You can see the little space saver tire there, just purely to get you from uh, the location of your flat to the mechanic. Um, not built for great trans-European uh, distances, clearly, just a very much a point-to-point -point and point-to-skirt squirt car. Um, you know, obviously this is a little um, tiny machine. Obviously the size was very much uh, you know, inspired by the MGBs and the Lotuses of those uh, of the 60s Colin Chapman era. Tiny little battery again, of course, to fit into that little space. What I do is I take off the connectors there when I don't drive it so that I don't drain the battery. That's what I used to do in the old days. My spare Momo steering wheel there, um, yet to be rewrapped. And uh, again, that, that little item there is worth quite a bit of money in this day and age. Um, what else can I say about this car? Obviously, it's um, you know it's purely analog. Uh, there's nothing about this car which has got computers or technology inside, which means it's a really it, it's one of those classic vehicles that are meant to be owned and treasured through the years. Uh, as you can see, I've opened the bonnets, the um, the boots, the doors, just have a bit of fun. Um, you can you basically nothing can happen to it uh, from a computer malfunction point of view. Everything's mechanical, everything's, everything's analog, everything can be repaired by yourself, with your own hands. Um, you don't need any fancy machinery or equipment or computers to fix it, which is highly treasured um, nowadays. It's a bit like an old uh, mechanical watch, isn't it? If you keep it lubricated and taken care of, it will look after you. I've heard many cases of many Mazdas with well over a million kilometers on the clock and uh, they still run fine. This one in particular runs really sweet and uh, nice. Yep, so that's my little MX-5 again, uh, this time the pop-up headlights activated. As I said, the only thing uh, mechanical, non-mechanical about this car is actually the CD player. Everything else is purely analog, purely mechanical. Even the side windows have to be adjusted by hand. And uh, yeah, purely electrical, purely mechanical. Now, um, as I said, I've owned this car since 2014. The reason why I bought this car in the first place was because um, it was affordable, it was fun to drive, it was reliable, it was cheap to run, and it was a convertible. And the reason why I bought a convertible is because I come from Penang, and back in Penang, um, when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s and through the 90s, a lot of my friends, by virtue of their parents themselves being uh, enthusiasts of uh, motor cars, they had um, the benefit of their father's um, vintage cars from the 70s. And we used to tool around Penang by the beach, by the Fringi, in um, MGBs, MGAs, uh, Suzuki, SJ410s, always top down. Uh, there were a couple of um, Jags in the picture. One of us, uh, one of my friends, had a had an XK120, another one had an XK140, and um, others obviously had the SLs. We had notably a 300 SL among us, the 24 valve version, and then the Dallas uh, 300 SL. Then another friend of mine had the uh, 250 SL, the Pagoda top, and we used to love driving around. And of course, in those days, my dad didn't have a vintage car convertible to drive around. And you know, that memory stuck with me through the years. So I've, I just treasure the idea of having a, an affordable and reliable and fun to drive a convertible. And, um, you know, I, I've thought about it many years and I, I just, there is a real proposition for keeping this car within the family, not ever having to get rid of it because I mean, it's, it costs next to nothing to own. It's a lot of fun to drive. It's beautiful to look at. It's fun to drive. It's reliable. Um, and I can really see my uh, my little kid, well, my kids, either my son or my daughter, tooling around uh, Penang or even with their friends in KL. Uh, you know, when they hit the driving age. And um, yeah, that's that's my little Master MX-5 there. Uh, Pop-up headlights, uh, very reminiscent of that era. A bit like that, my Porsche 944, actually. Yeah, so um, there it is.
Stupid, 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 stupid